For this tutorial, we'll cover the different ways we can use transitions to switch states from green to red, uh, with our goal being it to switch when your character overlaps with the cube. For the first approach, we are going to use a tick-based method. Uh, basically, we're going to assign a member variable to the context and read from that. So we're going to want to set up the actor begin overlap. We're going to want to grab the player character. Make sure these guys are equal. And now we'll need a new variable we can read from. Is overlap should do it. And we'll set that to true. Let's go ahead and cover the um, end overlap. Uh, for this one, we'll do it a little bit different. If this is true, then we will set it to false. Make sure to compile. So our goal now is to set our transition here with the information we just created. But first, we're going to make a little detour. And let's go ahead and actually set up this context properly. So we'll add a new variable. And this is just important for performance. We don't need to be casting this every frame. We should only be doing this once. Now if we go to our transition, this is what was there originally, which we don't need anymore. We can just grab our tutorial character. Grab is overlapped. And now if we go back to green again, because our goal is to toggle from collisions, we can kind of do the same thing. but not him, so it's inversed. If we play, it'll be green. If we collide with him, red, and we leave green again. For the next way, I will show you how to use an event-based approach by manually binding to events within the transition graph. We can clear out what we have here. And our goal is going to be to set up an initialized node. And what an initialized node does is this will fire when the state leading to this transition is hit. So as soon as green is entered, that initialized node will, will fire, and we can set up some logic here. We're going to manually bind to an event on initialize. And so here's the same event that we had defined originally in the context. Uh, while we're here, we're going to also hook down a uh, shutdown node. And this fires when the state exits, so we can clean up our event. So we'll do the same thing. Unbind event after we begin overlap. So this is a little bit different than normal evaluations. Um, this is still going to tick, but we don't want to evaluate the graph on a tick. So what we can do is have a set can transition evaluate conditionally. And on initialize, let's set this to false. And so what that means is every tick, it'll see this as false and it won't evaluate. Um, it won't ever call the graph. There's no overhead of going through uh, the BP VM. Um, but what we're going to want to do for this is set can enter transition to true, so when we do evaluate it, we know it should switch. And what we do is on the event itself, when it fires, we set it to true. So basically, this is always going to be false. It won't evaluate until the event fires. Then it says, yes, you can evaluate. And it knows it's true, so then it can switch states. I'm going to copy pretty much everything, and we're going to set it up in the reverse. So we want to grab an actor and overlap.
Okay. Let's go back to our cube character and delete all of this. We don't need them anymore. We'll delete is overlapped. Let's see what happens. Same thing. Except now it's slightly more efficient than it was before because it's not doing the overhead of the VM uh, evaluation every tick. For the last method, we are going to go with another event-based approach, but this one will be much faster and easier to accomplish. Let's delete everything we set before. And on the transition itself, if you click it, you can see up here we have delegate owner instance and delegate property name. Uh, when it's set to this, that refers to this state machine. So if we were to go over here and add a new event in, my new event, go back to the transition, it will show up here. And if you click on it, you can go to open graph. And in the transition graph itself, you can see your events here plus a new event trigger result node. Uh, we'll go back to that in a minute. But we don't want to use that. What we want to do is set it to the context because we still want to use the on uh, actor overlap. Now, when it's at the context, it doesn't know what that class is until runtime. So we need to set it to the actual class of the context, and that will now bring up all of the delegates that are part of it. And for ours, we want on actor begin overlap. So if we open him up, um, you have our old conditional result node. Let's uncheck that right now. We actually don't want this to evaluate. Um, one thing to note is when this is false, this will prevent this graph from being evaluated because it knows, hey, this is false. This will never be true. We'll never conditionally evaluate. Um, however, for events, that's different. This event trigger result node will still fire even if this is false. And there's an option here that says event triggers update. So what this means is when whatever event you're bound to is triggered, it will go through, it will check any of this logic, and then it will trigger an update of the state machine. So what that means is you can disable tick altogether and go with a purely event-based approach. And so what we're gonna do here is sort of recreate the logic that we had originally. So we'll get our player character and we'll just make sure he's equal, just like we did uh, manually. Drag it over and that's, that's it. Um, copy this for later. So we're going to want to do the same exact thing uh, down here, set the context, set this to cube character. On this time, we are going to do the end overlap. Disable the result. Okay, let's give this a shot. And just to show that we don't need tick for this, I'm going to go into the class defaults for this state machine and uncheck can ever tick. Actually, I'm gonna go one step further and remove tick registered. Uh, this will prevent it from ever being registered to begin with. Um, this can't be changed during runtime, um, but this is the most efficient way if you're concerned about performance of evaluating your state machine. You can see it still fires and it still works.